So in this demonstration, we are going to show you how to work with custom actions. So first of all, we have here a little page where we can filter a table. This table is based on an array data provider and the filtering is done using JavaScript code on the client. So let's look at the actual um, code that we have here. Um, as you can see here, we basically have a call function that calls our JavaScript code and passes to it a bunch of parameters, allowing it to basically take an array and filter and find the rows that have that specific value. So if we find that this is a, something that can be reusable and work in other places in our application, we can go and create our own custom action. So under the resources, we can create a new custom action. It needs to have a name slash a name. So the, the first thing is basically a directory or a section and then the name of the actual action. If you then expand it, you'll find two files over here. One of the files is the JS file and the other one is the JSON file. The JSON file has the metadata that describes our action chain and the JS file actually has the code that implements our action chain. We put in a template for you and you can basically fill out the code over here. So what we're doing here is we're just copying over the code that we had in the JavaScript over there. And we're going to modify it a little bit to uh, work better um, in our case. So again, instead of defining the function over here, we already have it defined up there. This accepts something called parameters and those parameters are what we're going to use in the application. So we're going to have parameters.array as one of the thing that we pass in. We're going to have parameters.fieldName as the other thing. This is the field that we're going to filter by. And then we're going to have a parameters value over here as the third parameters. And you can see this was just an example that we put in so we can remark that part of the code. If we now go into the JSON file, this is where you define the parameters. So we have a sample parameter in here. We're going to replicate the code and define basically three parameters. Now we just need to change their names and change their labels, potentially um, other aspects like what component is used to show them, whether it's a required property, things like that. So again, we're going to have an array parameter, which is the array that we're going to filter. We're going to have a field name parameter. This would be the field in this array that we are searching in. So this would be this uh, label. And then the last parameter would be our filter. So this is actually the filter that we're going to search for. So let's call this one filter. Give it the right label. And right now I'm keeping the type and the component and the required all to the default. All right, so now just make sure that array, field name, and filter are actually the names of the parameters I used over here. Actually, no, I just need to switch here from value to filter. And that's basically would be our little function and how we use those three parameters in our function. The other thing is that um, a function or an action needs to return um, a result. So it needs to either return a success or failure. So we're going to add here a return action dot create success outcome and specify what type of result we're uh, returning from here. So again, we're replacing the existing return and putting in the create success outcome over here. So in one case, we're returning arrays with values, and in the other case, we're returning empty array. Uh, this is in case we didn't find any values. Okay. Um, so here's our returns. Just one more thing that we need to fix here. The results need to be in double quotations. So we'll remove any extra squarely brackets, put in results in squarely brackets over here. And that's basically our returns from the action chain. So based on this, our action chain in the diagram would know what to show. We also need to specify this in the JSON file with the result shape. So we're going to return a result and then the type of result in our case, it's an array. 
we define the result shape and properties for our action chain. Now we're ready to go into one of the pages. Oh, before we do that, one more thing. In our application JSON file, we need to add this dependency or this new action chain that we created. So we are adding a required JS section, if there isn't one already. And we're going to add here a pointer to our action. So our action is under team. And under this, it's called find in array. So that's the name. And then we just need to make sure that our path, which is a relative path to the resources directory, is actually correct. And again, you can just look at the left side to figure out what you need to have there. One thing to note, the name of the action is not necessarily the name of the file. It depends on the ID that you defined for the action when you created it. So this is why finding array on the left is with camel case typing. All right, so now that our action is defined, we can go to one of our pages where we have a list of department populated into an ADP, and we're going to add an input text into the top, uh, bind this input text to a new variable that would host a name that we're searching on, which would be the department name. So let's just define here a new variable. We'll call this one search string. And now we need to do something when we change the value of the search string. And what we are going to be able to see right now is our custom height action over here, which we can drop into our action chain. And we have a find by array. We have our three parameters over here where we can pass value into this. Just like in any other parameter, you can use the um, variable picker or the expression editor. So in our case, we are going to pass uh, the array from the ADP. This would be the array to filter. The field that we're going to search is called department. That's the name of the field in the array. And then the value that we're searching for is what we have in our search string. Next thing that we're going to do is take an assign variable. And we're going to take the result of our action chain and assign it to the ADP. So over here, here's the results. Here's our ADP data, and we're just going to drag and drop one into the other. Let's make sure that we're setting it to empty first. So each time we just populate it with a new set of data. And at this point of time, our application should work. Let's switch to live, put in a department name. And here's our list of departments. Um, and again, if we'll put another name that doesn't exist right now in the array, it's just going to say no data to display. Now, this action chain that we defined, or this action is now reusable across multiple other places. Okay, so we can go, for example, to the original page where we called a JavaScript function and replace this call with a call to our new custom action. So let's bring our custom action over here. We again need to pass to it the array. So this would be the ADP data uh, that we have over here. This time it's from the employee ADP. We need to provide the search. So um, we're searching on the name field. And then the value is again a search string variable that we have here. Now we can remove this call action. And we just need to reassign the values to the AMP ADP instead of the function that we used before that, now we're going to assign into the data the result of our custom action. Like that. And again, make sure it's set to empty. Click Save. Go back to the page. And now we can go over and check it on the employee scenario. Again, searching by an employee name. And we can find Steve and get the result. So this is custom action chain, reusable JavaScript in your application in an easy declarative way.